Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'll be talking about the new panorama stitching function or extension that's coming to Luminar Neo. They announced it today, they being Skylum Software, the makers of Luminar Neo, and it's going to be available in one week on July 20th. They're having a special offer at the link down below. You can pick it up for $39 during this pre-order period, which is until July 20th, and then it'll be $49 after that unless you're a pro or ultimate subscription customer, in which case it's included in your subscription. But if you purchased Luminar outright, you would need to purchase this extension separately. Now it's got a lot of cool features and I'm gonna walk through some highlights here. There's a lot to cover and I'm gonna to need to break this down into multiple videos. But I also wanna point out that I have an early beta copy, which means everything doesn't work. So I can't even actually yet show you everything that's in it, but you can do a uh, standard panorama, which would be horizontal or vertical. You can do a uh, HDR pano, which is really cool. I'm just gonna say pano. If, uh, if you're okay with that, I'm gonna say pano every time. So standard pano, horizontal, uh, horizontal or vertical, HDR pano. You can also make a pano from a video clip, which is super cool. I'll show you that. And then you can also do subject or object isolation from a video and basically repeat a character, uh, isolate them and then have them repeat and create a pano out of that, which is really cool. That feature is not actually working yet in my early beta copy, but I did see a demo of it and it's really cool. So I'm gonna walk through all that. And by the way, if you haven't picked up my free ebook with uh, editing tips and tricks and insights and ideas all about Luminar Neo, it's available on my website. Just subscribe to my newsletter and you get a free copy and that'll help you with editing these beautiful panos that you're gonna be editing. So uh, I'm gonna go in and just walk through something. I'm not gonna demo everything simply because it will take quite a bit of time to walk through all that, like I said, and I really think that's gonna be multiple videos. But what I wanna do is just basically grab all of these frames which is gonna be 21 different photos. I'm gonna go show you how you can build a panel like this one here. Now, because it's an extension, it shows up on the catalog tab on this right-hand side, just like HDR Merge, et cetera. And you can see, drag two or more photos or one video here to start. Well, I'm gonna take these photos and I'm gonna drag them over and it's 21 photos taken with a full frame Sony camera, 42 megapixels. So it's gonna do HDR on seven sets of three exposures each. And then it's gonna stick those together and make a pano. In other words, it's gonna take five to seven minutes. I'm not gonna pontificate for that five to seven minutes. I'm gonna edit the video, but you will notice that there are different options here. I'm gonna go ahead and just check these and I'll leave a uh, ghost reduction on at medium. You could also remove files if you decide you wanna get rid of that. Uh, you can also go through here and select individual frames and just remove them, but I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and click start and it says, hey, here's your photos. What do you think, Jim? Are these them? And I'm, yeah, they are them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue and the processing will begin and then I'll be back here in a few minutes. Okay, here we are. That was quite a few minutes because uh, that is seven different sets of three exposures blended into an HDR and then those seven built into this pano. That took a little bit of while, uh, use a lot of resources, but I wanna show you this window. So you can re uh, basically relocate the photo, move it around as necessary. You can also, if you just stick your mouse and go up and down, you can adjust perspective. Uh, and that comes in really handy, especially on scenes like this. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of verticals I need to be uh, sort of contending with. Let's pretend that's it. I also wanna point out in the bottom left hand, corner, you've got different projection modes, spherical, cylindrical, mercator, plane, and fisheye. And if you want to read about those, I recommend a Google search. But spherical is working really well for me. And on these kind of shots, I think it works just fine. So once you're ready, you can just click stitch and it'll start to put that pano together. And there we go. And then I'm in the crop window. Now you'll notice there's black stuff around the edges, of course, and that's just because of all the alignment and the warping and whatnot. So I'm gonna come in and just fix that up by cropping in and just getting this thing looking the way I want it to look, which is really what my photo editing is all about. So I'm gonna go do something about like that, I think. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I actually think I'll do that. Let's just say that that's what I wanna do. Once you're ready, you just click crop and then it says, here's your photo, are you ready? And of course I am, so I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So that's the process. Now, I will tell you again, early beta copy. So the file handling is 
throwing me off a little bit. Sometimes the image will end up in the uh, panorama stitching folder, which is automatically created the first time you make a pano. Sometimes the photo is ending up back in the original folder that the raw files came from. And it seems like for a while, just the HDR bracketing uh, images were ending up in that um, original file. But this was an HDR, as you saw. And you can see I've been doing lots of different tests with different ghosting and all that kind of stuff. But this time it ended up in that pano stitching folder. So again, early beta. I'm a little confused about file handling and why it's different at times. But it is what it is. Now you can see I've also done a number of other things. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what I actually want to do is zoom in on the uh, the edited version of this HDR bracketed pano and show you what I ended up coming up with. Now, I took a little creative license with colors and light and things like that because, hey, it's my photo. I want to edit the way I want to edit. And, um, you know, this is kind of my prerogative and yours, of course, as well. But what I want to talk about here is uh, zooming in and taking a look at the photo so you can see how well it's merged because... There's a lot of different frames, right? Even these wires over here, these like telephone lines, they came in nicely. These buildings look nice. We call that the Jenga building. It's like that, so it's just kind of weird looking. But you can see all this is aligned pretty well. Now again, I've got an early beta copy, so obviously things are only uh, gonna get better. But I will say in some of my instances, that doesn't always line up perfectly. Maybe there's a slight bit of ghosting where there's a little bit of a building kind of showing off the edge of where the actual building is. Again, that would be ghosting. What I haven't been able to do just because the amount of time it takes is go through and try every different ghosting option or selection on every photo. It's just, just honestly, it's a massive consumption of time. But I will say that I'm getting really good results. Now, the other thing I noticed, and again, early beta copy is, this is what I ended up with. Really dark, and you saw the other version, which was much lighter. I'm not sure what the difference is or why it varied because it's all the same frames going into making the HDR pano. So just keep that in mind. I'm seeing a little bit of variances here, but again, early beta copy, I'm gonna say that a lot. I know these things are gonna be worked out. And uh, anyway, I'm quite happy with what I've got there. And honestly, I just think it looks fantastic. You'll also notice it is a DNG file, whereas over here in the pano stitching, I'm coming up with a TIFF file. Again, the file handling is maybe a little bit confusing to me, and I think it probably hasn't all been sorted out is just my guess. But again, early beta copy, and I actually think I'm getting an updated beta copy like any minute now. I just had to make the video now. Now, two of the things I want to show you. The first one is a pano from video, which is really cool. I've got this video here. And this, I'll just go ahead and play it, is just a vertical video I took on my iPhone in Iceland one morning on our trip there last October. And so I just panned around with my iPhone in vertical orientation and I took this video just because honestly, it's super pretty. What I wanna do is drag this over here. You do not get these options because it's a video, it's not multiple frames being merged. I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And what you can do is actually create a pano out of this video, which I think is cool. You can take this uh, end and just drag it if you want to adjust the starting position, which I don't. You can do that the same on the other end for the ending position. But I'm totally fine with this video. I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And what it will do is just make a pano photo out of that vertical video, which I think is super fun. And as you can imagine, I've been doing that a lot because I've got a lot of vertical videos that I've taken when I'm somewhere and I'm like, ooh, look at that, that's so pretty. I've been doing that quite a bit. And honestly, the results are just impressive. I'm just having fun with this one. Okay, and once again, here's my photo. I'm gonna zoom in and you can see it's made the pano. And honestly, it's looking, whoops, I'm uh, adjusting perspective there. I need to drag that photo. Maybe something about like that. I think that looks really nice. There's my pano. I mean, it just looks awesome. So same as the previous one, just click stitch. And then you got the crop window and boom, you've got a pano photo made out of a video. And in fact, I will show you that one. That one shows up right here. And that's uh, obviously a bit edited, but that is the, uh, the pano photo made from a video. So I think that's super fun. And so now you can make pano, uh, vi uh, pano photo memories out of your, your videos. But there's another cool thing that I wanna show you. And this one, uh, this feature is not ready. So I saw a demo of it, but I can't actually show you it in action. But I wanna show you a video and talk about what you can do here. So this is a video I recorded, just a four second clip of me walking, something that I recorded a while back on a vlog, right? But it's literally just me walking as you can see. But you can do, this is the subject and object isolation. So I'm gonna go ahead and empty these files. 
and I'm gonna drag this video over here and I'm gonna click start. And this is, you look at the bottom, it says custom object composition. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And what I wanna do is, you now get these plus signs. So uh, let's say I want to isolate myself and make sure that I show up in a panel that's created out of this. And so I can go in and isolate myself, but the cool thing is I can do that multiple times. Let me show you. So plus, it gives me this little box and I'm just gonna take this box and put it around me and say, hey, isolate that, hang on to that guy. But then I can take the video over to here, let's say there, and once again, click plus, and just drop this box on top of that guy walking, which is me, and then I can come over here and do that again, let's say something like that, and once again, do plus, and come over here and just say, capture that. And then I hit continue, and what I'll end up getting is, let me get this photo, now, this is a photo that I made in Illuminar with layers and masking, but what you would end up with is basically a photo like this, where you isolate a subject multiple times, and then I did this with layers and masking, just to be clear. I did not do this in the pano function, simply because it's not working yet, but I saw a demo and it looks good. So to be clear, that's not a pano. Of course, this is just a mock-up, for lack of a better term, but this is an example of what you can do the example they showed us was a person water skiing and jumping, and they basically repeated that person several times throughout a pano, all that created from a single video clip. Pretty amazing stuff, and I think this feature is going to be incredibly popular. And that's my kind of first look preview, so to speak, of what's coming in Luminar Neo with the panorama stitching, or what I like to just call pano function or extension. It's coming out next week. It's pretty cool stuff, and you can make photos like this one that I think are just fantastic and beautiful. So if you're not clear, panos are great for big, impressive, broad scenes. So long, you know, massive cityscapes like this one. This is Austin. Landscapes, it's obviously very popular, things like that. I just love overall the whole idea, the innovation, and the things that they keep doing to make the Luminar Neo platform more of a platform and give us more and more high-level capability, which is optional, right? Hence, it's an extension. So. That's my, uh, that's my first look, my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos about this stuff because I love it. It's fun. And in fact, if you want to see me edit a photo like this and do an HDR pano, let me know. And uh, other than that, thanks for hanging out. I'll be back soon with more videos, and I'll be covering this in more depth once I have the updated beta copy. And, of course, uh, you'll have it next week. So thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.